in order to allow the truth of me, of my neshama, to be able to shine. Sometimes we just can't shine. And there's something that we can do to allow our soul to shine. And that's um, what we're going to engage in in the next uh, several days. It's a, uh, a not a simple thing. And um, f for many people, it might not even be something you should engage in, as we will see, because it's um, very demanding. And the truth is, this is chapter 29. So, you know, if a person has developed themselves, evolved, you know, chapter by chapter, you know, uh, year after year, so then that's one thing. But we'll see. It's, it's just cut short in the middle over here. Tomorrow we'll get a start to get a clearer understanding. Um, very short classes. And we will uh, continue. Any questions, any comments, any thoughts? Uh, Alice, couldn't an individual be dull in davening, but not in other areas because it's not repetitive like everyday davening? Yeah, of course. But, you know, if, if our prayers are not, you know, don't have some life to it, that means we haven't touched our heart with a connection to God in the heart. So that doesn't mean we can't intellectually, you know, have a connection by our awareness. Absolutely. But the, the heart is still dull because it didn't touch the heart. That doesn't mean you can't enjoy something, you know, learning. Of course not. Again, but it did not touch the heart in the way that it is shaping us and allowing us to become more refined. It's important to appreciate that intelligence, intelligence is not who we are. It's our emotions is more who we are because that's what the character of the person is. What we know needs to become then our character quality, which is in the emotional makeup of the individual, character building. So we can know a lot, but if it doesn't come to the heart that we feel it in some manner, then it really didn't mold and shape us. That's why intelligence is called mothers in chapter three and <clears throat> and uh, emotions are the offspring so the ultimate thing is you know of a family to have offspring yeah. right to produce so you want to produce the product the product is the emotions character building is not in intelligence character building is in the emotional makeup then that will lead of course to one's behavior so that is an important element for us to appreciate that if you have a dullness of the heart that means it's hard to refine yourself and to have character building and to really attach yourself to God and what God needs from you that doesn't mean that in intellectually you could you know do things and 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 bring yourself to some um you know connection or awareness but until we refine ourselves in the heart that's going to be a a, a a challenge so that's why the, the Bainami who takes full responsibility for their lives wants to make sure that there shouldn't be a dullness of heart so there will be a refinement in the heart there will be uh, an alacrity in in engaging and fulfilling what your purpose is what God needs you for. 
So that that's that's the key over here that is uh, necessary for us to uh, to appreciate. Thank you, Elvis, for that. Another question here. Lori, the grief I experienced from my husband's sudden death made me feel dead. Couldn't get let God in for a long time. Mm, yes. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's definitely uh, a very great challenge when you, and that's what we did, you know, spoke about in chapter 26, the curveball that sometimes things happen to us that makes it so difficult and and therefore we have a, a heavy heart, sometimes a heart of stone towards God because of things that happen. And that's exactly what we're, the Alter Rebbe wants to address here. Uh, Davida, usually human nature is that we warm to something physical and something that indulges our ego. How do we get past the Sahara to feel warm our hearts when doing spiritual deeds. Hmm. Tonight's class of JLI. For those who are coming, they will have that. Yeah, tonight's class, exactly. Big question, big answer to come. The connection is our power source, yep. Hmm. Thank you, Marco Lozato. Okay. Anybody, Alan? Please share with us. Hey, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. So, I missed the first part of this. So, um, if this may have been explained or, or spoken about earlier, I don't know. But um, I, catching the, the later part of your shear, um, I'm thinking about the uh, the actual practice of twilling as a tikkun of rectifying the dullness of the heart, being that the actual baiting, the boxes, mm. are physically in to bring alignment of the mind and the heart, you know? Um, Absolutely. And, yeah. You know, I don't know if you, you know, were talking about this earlier, but, you know, it, for, for me, filling just is, you know, that I feel it has this kind of purpose. It's, yeah, it's called Shibur Aleva Mayach. It is the, the binding and the unifying of the heart and the mind together because the, our mind can know one, uh, one truth and our heart has a different, um, uh, a, a different uh, desire than the truth of our mind and therefore we can be pulled in two different directions and what fill and helps is because we put it on the head and we put it against the heart is to bind the heart and the mind together that they should work in unison as one yeah thank you for bringing that up Alan very very well said and um, uh, one of the so to speak um, spiritual benefits of um, uh, of tefillin, absolutely. And um, just to, to, to emphasize that point, is that how often do we have, you know, in our day that we know something intellectually, we know that this is the right thing, we're, a little, we're more objective about it in our mind, but my heart doesn't feel it either. I'm lazy or, you know, or I just, you know, I ha I'm frightened, so I don't want to do that, um, whatever it might be, I'm, I'm sure we all experience that, and Philan helps that, exactly. So, the Alter Rebbe's angle over here is that we, you know, the dullness of heart, and of course the bane that he's putting on Tefillin, um, the question is, it's not being done with such, you know, such a, a, a passion, or with such a um, strong desire. There's a dullness. It's not, you know, not so excited as one should be. 
how do you deal with that? That's what the alternate was speaking about today. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Michael. Hello. I am prepared uh, today for the uh, chapter 28, uh, Ada 8, and there were two great analogies from um, Rabbi Gordon, uh, may his memory be blessed, which was about um, Rab Meir Premishlein and um, that he uh, that he went every day to the mikvah in, on a, a high hill, right? And it, and it was the winter, and it was very dangerous. And he went there up, and then one day there came um, people who didn't believe or weren't involved in uh, Judaism very much, and they wanted to beat him, and they said, "But he can, that can be too." And he, they went upwards, and then they um, slipped down and fall down and went to the hospital. And um, Rabbi Meir said um, to them, uh, when they asked him why, and um, he said it wasn't something uh, physical, it was something spiritual, because he was connected to Hashem, and that uh, should have show that we shouldn't engage in the things we can't control. And that is when um, the bad thoughts come in our minds when we pray. We shouldn't battle with them. That's like uh, the two wrestlers and we fight with them, um, then we get uh, filthy from them too. Right. Because um, we make them stronger, deeper, through our energy. And um, only the Tzadikim can us. And then the rebel said, um, we should uh, we should see, like the Shem Tov said, um, it's like uh, opposite self from us, a pagan idolater. And he tries to mock us when we uh, pray. And... Um, we would say to everyone who want to mock us, let let him is not worthy to engage with him, because when you engage with a fool, you become a fool. Right. When you, when you engage with a filthy person, you become filthy, and um, we should uh, try to ignore it and think on something else, or we should plead uh, to Hashem. Yes, that's our story. Thank you. Yes, right. That was uh, from yesterday. Um, absolutely. So. The fact that one can deal with their negative thoughts, um, what it means is that you're not allowing it to control you, to control you. Um, but it doesn't mean that your heart is full of life. It doesn't mean that you necessarily will have, you know, the 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 wherewithal to to in a positive way to pray or to do any kind of mitzvah with with alacrity with full joy you might still have a dullness of heart um and and that, that's where we're um continuing the conversation today as uh, as you said michael very nicely uh from what we spoke about previously yeah very good Okay, anybody else uh, to share with us? Did I see something else online? Um, Instagram. I don't see. No. All right, we are going definitely to continue this <laughs> conversation. Again, um, I want to make sure that everybody recognizes that where we're going to go with this is 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 the is demanding. It may even sound it will be very counterintuitive because you might think, hmm, you know, if this is going to destroy someone's self-esteem, we're going to see no, 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 no. It's quite the contrary. You have to have the strongest, most powerful self-esteem to be able to engage in any of the things that the Altenev is going to discuss henceforth. More to come. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you. Rabbi, oh. Rabbi Fine? Sure, Alan. What chapter are we going into? Just We're in 29. We just started 29 today. We did a very little piece. It's actually, the, uh, the being where we're in the leap month, or, you know, um, a leap year, so these classes are actually very short classes um so we didn't say that much 
<laughs> I mean, we did. We said a lot, the truth is. But there's so much more to be said. I was just forewarning, is forearmed, that it's going to be uh, heavy-duty uh, stuff that, again, that you need real strong sense of self, self-awareness, um, being a uh, you know strong self-esteem to be able to entertain what we will uh, henceforth discuss. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zich and Kedush in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow. Or today, one o'clock for your round.